Thank you very much. So, yeah, we've been teaching and writing about game audio for years, and we run the Masters in Sound and Music for Interactive Games at Leeds Beckett. Um, so as Igor was just saying, as well as writing books on game audio, we have been working with Epic Games for the last few years on their tutorial material uh, and documentation. And you can find out more about us on these websites and you can follow Dave on Twitter here at The New Teed. So today we're going to be talking about dynamic and interactive music. And hopefully we'll be showing you how quick and straightforward it can be to set up music systems using Unreal Engine's new Quartz system which is specifically designed for accurate timing. So we'll cover how to set up a clock for music, parallel and transitional approaches to dynamic music, and then we'll look at some more granular or procedural approaches, and finally we'll examine what it actually means to be interactive. We're going to start by talking about how to set up a basic dynamic music system using Quartz. And at first we'll use this to achieve a parallel approach to dynamic music, it's sometimes called layering or vertical reorchestration. So we have some stems of music that are playing in time with each other and the game itself will bring them up and down in volume. The easiest way to think about this is to imagine the game as hands on a mixing desk. So if we have a quick look in Reaper, uh, we've got a core layer that's going to play. And then when stuff happens in the game, I'm going to bring up this. might bring up this layer. So that's the principle of a parallel system. You've got all these tracks playing in sync and then you're bringing ones up and down. So we're going to go over to um, Unreal Engine and we're going to show you how this is actually built. So we're setting up some music for this room here and the player needs to switch all these switches on that are up on these platforms uh, in order to open the door and get out of this room. And while they're doing that, they need to avoid this dangerous object in the center. So let's open up our, our blueprint. So the basis of any music system that's rhythmic or metered is a clock. And as humans, we've got this really accurate sense of timing when it comes to musical pulse. We're really sensitive to any kind of fluctuations. So this is why Unreal Engine's Quartz system operates on a processing thread that's entirely separate to the game thread and so it allows us to build a musical timing system that's solid and doesn't fluctuate with frame rate. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is get access to that quartz subsystem and we're going to create a new clock. We're going to promote this to a variable so that we can easily access it around the blueprint and then we're going to define the clock settings by dragging out from the in settings and we're going to make Quartz time signature. So going back to our, our Reaper session, you can see that this is in 4-4 and it's at 89 beats per minute. So um, we'll define those clock settings. Uh, the other thing is, is that it's 16 bars long. So it's got this little tail uh, in bar 17 what we don't want to do is we don't want to loop it at 16 bars or else we lose that nice tail. We want a nice smooth uh, music system. So what we're going to do is re-trigger it at bar 16. So we need to bear that in mind when we set up our system. So we've got 4-4 four, four, and then we're going to drag out from the, we're going to name the clock. Thanks Dave. And then we're going to drag out from that reference and set its BPM. And because we want to re-trigger the music every 16 bars, we're also going to subscribe to quantization event. So here we can get all kinds of musical events from the clock. For the moment, we're just interested in bars, but you can see here we can get all kinds of beat divisions and things like that. From this, we're going to create an event dispatcher that's going to create an event, so we can pick this up elsewhere in the blueprint. And let's start by just adding a print string to be triggered by that event so we can just get a readout of that. Um, and before that's going to do anything, we need to obviously start the clock. So we'll put in a, a start clock um, event at this point. OK, so now we've got a thrilling demonstration. We're going to play the game. And you're going to see some numbers 
from that print string. Or not. It's going well so far. Uh, are you starting the right clock? See, we're obviously making some deliberate mistakes here so you can learn how to troubleshoot in Unreal Engine. Okay, so this is just counting through the beats. It's getting a readout of the bars from our Quartz subsystem. But obviously, this is just going to carry on and on forever. So we'll go back to our blueprint. And what we want to do is when that bar number equals 16... then we want to do something. So we'll check if it equals 16 with this, this equals function and branch. So when it's true, then we're going to do something. And we're going to use this to re-trigger the music. So we're going to create another custom event, which we're going to call Q music. So this is actually going to be the thing that lines up our music ready to go. So we're going to reference it here when it equals 16. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to reference it the first time it plays, so when the clock actually starts. So then we get the first time, it's going to trigger off the music, and then when it comes round, it's going to trigger it off again. And we'll just add a print string there, just saying cue music. So the other thing we want to do when we hit bar 16 is to reset the transport. So if you think about transport in your door, you know, the play, the stop, where the cursor is, that's what we're going to do here. And that means that it's going to restart the count from 16 again. And it's going to do it at the next bar line. We'll go into this in a bit more detail. Okay, so what we've just done in five or six minutes is we've set up the fundamental um, system for any kind of, of music dynamic or interactive music system in Quartz. Um, we're going to be using this again and again. You'll see it in other blueprints. Um, and and that's, it. that's basically all there is to it. Uh, so that's, let's actually play some music with that. So let's go to that custom event we just created, the cue music. Here's a fundamental concept with building systems uh, using Quartz. Um, we don't play music from a blueprint. So blueprints are updated at frame rates, which can vary, and they're not accurate enough for musical timing anyway. So what we do in blueprints is we queue the music up to play on the Quartz system, which is frame rate independent. So blueprints queue the music, and Quartz decides when it plays. So from this, we're going to create sound 2D. We're going to assign our music, so it's that parallel room core track that you just heard. This creates an audio component ready to play, and then we're going to play quantized. So that's the key function of playing stuff back on Quartz, is the play quantized. And we're going to get a reference to that clock that we created earlier. And we decide when do we want it to play. And we do that using a make quantization boundary. And we'll go into these in a bit more detail later. But essentially, we want this to happen at the same time that we reset the transport, so at the next bar. Um, okay, so while we're here, um, we'll add another custom event from this play quantized. And we'll assign our music to a variable, which we'll call core. And this is so we've got a reference to the piece of music. So when it started, we've now got a reference to this piece of music in this variable, and we can turn it up and turn it down, and we can switch it off when we leave the room. So once all that's done, we just need to move our start clock, and we'll do that when we know that all our music is ready, queued up and ready to go. So we've got this queued event that comes off this switch. Everything's queued. We only want to start the clock once, so we'll add a do once node. And that's it. So this will now re-trigger our 16-bar piece of music every 16 bars. So let's have a listen. So we've got a debug 
on, you can see the green and white text at the top of the screen. And you can see the piece of music that's currently playing. And as we get up to bar 16, you'll see another version of that, and that's the version that's being queued up, ready to go. And then you'll see a little bit of an overlap when the first piece is playing at that tail and the second piece has started. So coming up. And then our piece of music's being re -queued. Okay, so we've got a basic re-triggered system. Uh, now we're going to add some interactivity. So as we mentioned earlier, around the room there's a series of switches that the player needs to jump up to to get the door open. And we want the player to feel cool while they're jumping around in this room on the platforms. So we're going to bring a piece of music in to reinforce that movement. And that's going to be this piece. So that second track you can see there. Okay, so back in our blueprint, we're just going to duplicate that entire system that we've just built for our second layer. And all we need to do is to obviously change the sound that's played. So in this case, it's called layer one. And we need to assign it to its own variable so that we can control its volume. And now um, we'll just hear those both those tracks being queued up in synchrony. We'll just move our clock to the end so it doesn't start until everything's lined up and ready. OK. Yeah? Okay, so it's playing both our tracks, and we're going to play around with the volume of that second track. So um, let's go back to, uh, let's come out of that. Okay, so we've got, um, we're going to create a float variable, and that's just a, a number that's going to control the volume. And um, we'll put that float variable in as a multi as a volume multiplier here so that when the music is re-triggered whatever volume the track is currently at the new one's going to start at the same volume and the other thing we're going to do is to set volume as soon as the sound is created and the reason for this again is down to timing so since as i've said the quartz system runs separately uh, to the blueprints, we might get a situation where the sound is actually queued up and is played by the clock before the blueprint gets around to actually setting its volume. So we'd get some sort of glitch there. The other thing with parallel systems is to remember to edit the sound waves themselves and go into voice management and make sure that the sound is set to play when silent. So if we've got a parallel system with things coming up and down, sometimes they will be silent. And if you don't do this, then basically when the sound comes off silence, it's going to start playing from the beginning of the track again. By saying play when silent, the system's actually keeping track of where we are in the sound, so it will just bring it up in volume. Uh, so let's just set, make a simple switch to turn this sound on and off for the moment. So we'll put, set up a keyboard event. We'll just use the zero key. And we'll add that to a flip-flop. And then this is basically going to um, set the volume of the layer. And it's going to set the, um, the variable to so that layer one volume. So we're going to set the volume multiplier. We're just going to use this key just to test it. So we've got two pieces playing in parallel. When stuff happens in the game, it might switch that one off or switch that one on. And we're putting it in the variable as well, so that if the music loops round, it's going to loop round at the same volume to which it's currently set. Okay? Okay, let's just have a listen to that. Okay. 
we started in in on top of the flux, on top of the sun, the flux capacitor, which is a very dangerous place to start. <laughs> Okay, so now we're we're able to switch that second track on or off. Okay, um, and everything is remaining perfectly in synchronization. Now that works, but it doesn't sound very nice. So let's go back here, and we're going to just get rid of that, and instead we're going to use a timeline. So. Um, we can edit our timeline and have a look at what it's doing. And you can see it just gives us a smooth curve. So when we want to turn the music on, it's going to bring the volume up like that. And when we want to turn it off, we're just going to reverse that timeline. So we'll just set that up. So in the game itself, basically we've got a trigger. And when the player jumps up to one of the platforms, they hit the trigger. That's going to play that timeline, bring the music up. And when they jump down, it's going to hit the trigger again and that's going to bring the music down so we get that kind of movement where the player is is jumping and we hear that second track come up and down um, okay so that's a bit nicer a bit smoother Now, we're going to add another layer. Um, so in the center of this room is this red thing. This is the flux capacitor, which, as we know, is a very dangerous object. So when the player gets near to that, we want to warn them by bringing in another musical layer. And that is this one here. So we're going to bring up... Okay, so again, all we need to do is copy the whole system again, assign a new variable for layer two. Obviously change the sound that we're playing. This is called layer two. And then we need another new float variable to record its volume. And we're going to use this to, uh, we're going to control this with a distance from. So we're going to get our distance from the center of the flux capacitor to the player. So this is what, what we're doing here, is um, we're getting that distance, and then we're converting those numbers into a range between 1 and 0, which is what we want to do for, for the volume of the sound. So that as we get closer to that danger, that layer is going to come in, and as we get further away, it's going to go out. And the only thing we need to do here is, oh, we've done it already. Put the clock again at the end so that everything's lined up before we, before we go. Good? Okay. I think we've, I think we, we triggered, we spawned and triggered it so we had that music, that second layer on all the time. Okay, we can hear it a bit more clearly now. Okay. Good jump. Um, so, okay, how long did that take us? I don't know. 12, 15 minutes? We've now got a, a parallel music system and we can use timelines to trigger tracks to come on and off and we can change the curve of those timelines or we could take any variable from the game and use that to control a layer of the music. This parallel approach is really good for representing variables, for giving player information about what's going on. So it could be like a special mode is active, you know, you're in stealth mode and it brings up a layer, it could be time of day, um, amount of time left, how many enemies are around us. We could all have layers of music that come in and out depending um, 
on those variables. However, <coughs> sometimes you might want the music to be changing a bit more dramatically. And that's when we need to look at transitions. So moving from one piece of music to another, and that's often challenging in games because we don't know when these things are actually going to happen. The typical response is that the game event happens, then the music waits until the nearest kind of juncture, maybe the next beat or the next bar, and then cues a transition. If we've got atonal music with no kind of musical pulse, then transitioning between these pieces is quite easy because we don't require any kind of pulse or quantization. But for most music, um, we're going to need some sort of metered system, some sort of clock. So in this room, when the player has completed that task and they've turned on all those switches and they get to the door just in time, we want to open the door and we want to play this ending piece. Okay, so let's uh, put that transition into our blueprint. Again, we're going to copy and paste that play quantized system. We're going to change the sound to parallel room door opened. We don't need any variables because when this plays, the music's essentially going to stop. So we don't need to track it and change the volume of it. Um, we'll set the quantization of this sound at the moment to play at the next bar. And of course, when that plays, we basically want to turn everything else off. So what we're going to do is we'll get a reference to our other pieces of music and we'll just fade them out. So the player is going to play around the room when they're jumping. We get that nice layer um, to emphasize that movement. When they're near the flux capacitor, we get another layer that emphasizes the danger. And when they've got to that final door and completed the room, we transition at the next bar and play that end cue and fade everything out. So Dave now needs to achieve and complete this room. Okay, um, let's have a look at those quantization boundaries in a little bit more detail. Uh, so, that's this thing here. So, that was set to play at the next bar, and you could feel it, it felt quite nice and quite musical. We could set it to play at the next beat, and at the moment we're going to go from current time relative. So, that is, wherever we are, whenever the next beat happens, then play the music. So I've just got a little cheat key here. So you should see printed to the screen when I've pressed the key and then you'll hear the music transition. In this instance it should transition at the next beat. Very nice. Now if I said that was a beat multiplier of three then it will count and it will do it in three beats time from now, so current time relative. Okay, so it did it in three beats time. Um, and you can change that to any of these settings to have that transition. Uh, I'll just put it back to one for the moment. Uh, okay, now we've made it through the door and we're in the next corridor. And this next corridor is going to be more of a transitional system. So we've got this piece of music playing. And it's going to transition when we go through a laser to this. Okay. Um, now you might see it's in a slightly unusual time signature here. It's 5-4, four, 
BPM is 158. So let's have a look at our system. This, you might remember, is exactly the same system we've just built for the parallel. So we've set up a clock. In this instance, it's 54, and the BPM is 158. And then we're counting and re-triggering. Now our musical pieces are three bars long, so we need to re-trigger it every three bars. So equal equals three bars. And here we're queuing the music system. The only difference now is that when we walk through this laser, which I'll just show you. Um, so we walk into the corridor, starts the music, as we go through this laser here, it actually triggers off this turret at the end. It's going to start shooting at me. So I'm going to heighten the music at that point. Now, when I've walked through that laser, the thing we want the music to do is to remember which track to play when it re-triggers. Okay, so the only th the change we've done is we've queued our music here. I walk through the laser and it transitions to the next piece of music on the next bar and the only thing we've done is to set this variable we've called intensity level so that when it's re-triggered it remembers which one to play okay so let's see what that sounds like Okay, so now it will re-loop, re-trigger, um, whatever intensity we are at. And that could be anything in your game. You know, anytime you want to transition, it could be I'm going to a new area or something's happened, etc., etc. Um, you also heard another transition then, and that was when I get killed. So here we've got a transition to death. So the same system. Play the sound, play it quantized. In this instance, we want death to be pretty immediate. So it was beat multiplier one. So at the next beat, die and fade out the existing music. Um, one transition that's slightly different is the success. So if I manage to make it to the end of the corridor, we want to play um, the music that we've succeeded and we want to play a nice musical time so here's the success uh, cue okay you notice it's got a bit of an upbeat to it it's like da da and we want that da to land on the first beat of the bar so we want it to be like okay so actually we need to play it on the fifth beat of the bar so looking at the success queue here, what we're now using is this other function called bar relative. And by using this, we can say are any of these boundaries within the actual bar itself. So you could say right on the on the seventh, eighth of the bar, I want something to happen. Uh, on the third quarter in the bar, I want something to happen. In this case, it is on the fifth beat of the bar that we want to bring in that success queue. So Now's the most challenging part of the presentation where we actually need to be able to get to the end of the corridor and hear the success transition. So, <coughs> wish me luck. <laughs> Deliberate death, just to illustrate that transition for you again. Okay, so now we've built a, a transitional system, so we can, <coughs> we can set up music systems that have layers. We can set up music systems that transition from one piece of music to another. Now we're going to get a little bit more interesting, 
um, <clears throat> hopefully. We're going to call this kind of procedural, a procedural approach, or you could call it a granular approach. Essentially, what we're doing here is we're taking a more note level um, technique instead of these kind of big chunks of WAVs. And there's a couple of advantages to doing that. Uh, instead of these pre-baked systems, pre-baked WAVs, we're actually working and triggering things on a beat level here. So firstly, that's going to allow us to get more variation in our music. It's not going to feel like a repetitive loop. And secondly, it's going to make our music more responsive to game events. So we can adapt at the next beat instead of having to wait for the end of a particular musical chunk. So what you're going to actually hear now is this sound cue, which as you can see has got um, eight variations of that. It's going to pick, we're going to get a bit of variation. It's going to play that one. Then it's going to play uh, this one. And then this one. Uh, and that one. I missed out the third one. It's going to go basically that, 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 that. Um, now, it's in 5-4, but I don't want it to sound, I don't want it to trigger those things like it feels like 5-4. So let me just talk about that for a second. So <coughs> in a 5-4 time signature, we could think of it as like 1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2-1-2. We could think of it as kind of five beats, if you like, or we could feel it as uh, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. So if there's four beats and the beats are not regular, and in this case, we want it to sound slightly influenced by Mission Impossible. It goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. So I want my beats to be a dotted crotchet, dotted crotchet, 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 or dotted quarter notes. I'm not sure how you refer to um, musical notation in Italian, but um, you get the idea. I don't want five regular beats. So what we've done here in our procedural corridor, we've set up the clock, but this time we've used this optional pulse override, which means basically you can make the beats be whatever you want them to be. And in this case, we've got dotted quarter note, dotted quarter note, quarter note, quarter note. So the clock now, the quartz clock, is going to be giving me, okay, and I'm going to be using that to, uh, to actually play back those sound cues. So let's have a listen. Uh, okay. So this time I'm going to trigger the laser and we're going to hear that being played. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now the other thing is we've actually got some tonal elements queued up and being played at those beats as well. But we're muting them until I come out of cover. So behind each of these blocks, I'm kind of in cover. And when I come out, I didn't last long. But maybe you heard that string section come in. Uh, let me just do that again. And the thing with this is, is that the music will change at the next beat. If I go into cover. Okay, I've now got another layer that when the player gets halfway down the room, I want to switch that on. Okay, so um, you can hopefully you can hear that it's much more reactive. So basically, I'm queuing up these these percussive beats: one, two, three, four, 
I'm also queuing up these tonal beats, one, two, three, four, but I'm not switching them on unless I'm in cover. And then when I get halfway down the corridor, I switch on this system, which then counts through the four different tonal uh, sections that I want to play, dum, 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 and they change a little bit on each, uh, on each pulse. Um, the other thing we can do here with our success is get a little bit more um, responsive. So the last time we had success and it played on the fifth beat of the bar, so we got, we got dun, dun. but now I've got my beats, I could actually make it play either like that, so I could start on the ninth quaver of the bar, or I could make it land here on this beat, so I need to start on the seventh, or I could make it land on this beat, so I need to start on the fifth quaver in the bar, or if I start on the second quaver of the bar, I could make it land on the second beat. So that's what we've done here. So we've said, right, when you get success, then look at which beat we're currently at and only allow it to be triggered if we're on one of these beats here. So can I make it to the end of this room? Dave always makes the bits that I need to demonstrate a little bit harder in terms of gameplay than the bits that he needs to, just to make me look like an idiot. So, um, oops. So now we've got a, a more procedural approach, and um, we're going to now go into our final room. And you might be asking the question all the way through this: Why are we bothering to do this? I mean, hopefully we've shown that it's pretty straightforward to set up these systems. You can set up parallel systems, transitional systems, procedural systems, even. But why not just use FMOD? Why not just use WISE? One answer is F modern wise cost money. Um, but more importantly, we think that working together within the same tool enables um, all kinds of collaborations between the audio and the visuals to emerge more naturally. If you understand the tools, then you become part of the game design process. You're not just somebody who sits on the sidelines waiting for a programmer to send you an event or a variable. So in this penultimate room here, um, Quartz is triggering our music, our musical notes, but it's also triggering our visuals. So what that means is that when we change the notes, for example by reversing them, visuals automatically follow. Or we could shuffle the notes, completely randomize them, speed the whole thing up. And all the time the visuals are automatically following. Now, um, there's another reason why you might want to do this. And that's because everything we've done so far, we call dynamic music. So it's music that reacts to events and variables. Now we can be clever in how we do that, but the music is always a passive receiver of instructions. If we had true integration in our tools and processes, then perhaps we can start to look at music as more of an equal partner in the decision-making processes of a game. So the game might have a fairly arbitrary variable. So how long does it take for enemies to give up and stand down? Or exactly how many bullets does it take for an enemy to die? 
perhaps in these cases the the game could look to the music state and use the music's condition to inform the decision so that game events and music can work together. So in the final room of our demonstration project here, we've got some enemies. Uh, you'll have to use your imagination there. We've got some laser eye weapons, and they're pretty fast. So the exact number of hits that these enemies need to take before dying is not that really that important. It's quite arbitrary. It's an arbitrary variable. So we set up the system so that when we've passed a certain number of impacts or bullets, the enemy will die, but they'll not die immediately. They will look to the music system and they will actually die on the next musical beat. Thank you very much.